Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to a, another Project Spark tutorial. I'm your host, Ryan Wilshire, otherwise known as uh, Abra. And today, we are going to be covering top-down shooters, okay? Top-down vertical scrolling shooters. Um, to my knowledge, all right, uh, a lot of you know me for because I created the game Space Wing, uh, which as of March 3rd, sorry, March 21st, uh, 2014 uh, is, I believe, the only vertical scrolling shooter on Project Spark, and this is a travesty. It's something I want to change because the top-down shooter genre is such is so awesome, right? I mean, that's why I created my game uh, with that. But I want to see lots more, so hopefully this tutorial will help you guys uh, create your own um, vertical scrolling shooters and things of that genre. And this, this information, this technique can be used uh, across many different uh, you know, kind of side-scrolling genres and, and things of that nature as well. So in order to do this, we've created an empty world. And again, it's got the default values, the follow camera, everything like that. We're going to go into the main character's brain. And the very first thing is just to delete that follow camera, OK? We're not interested in the follow camera because um, we're creating a, a top-down camera, right? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually create a logic cube here. OK. And it needs a second to think, maybe two. I don't know why it always freezes at this point whenever I'm after I search for something. Anyways, OK. So here I'm going to I'm going to snap it down to the ground. And but to snap it down to the ground, you just actually have to click while having it selected, just click the left trigger. And that'll snap it to the ground. We're also actually going to use grid snap in this. And for those that don't know how to enable grid snap, you just hold down on the D-pad for about a second. And that will enable and disable grid snap. If you just, if you just click it, it's not going to work. You have to hold it down for uh, about a, you know half a second or whatever it is. So we're going to place this you know, right where our character is standing. We're going to grab our character, and he should snap right into the middle very nicely. Okay, uh, And it's just for my sanity. The character technically speaking, doesn't have to be in the middle with his setup, but it, it makes sense that he is, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the brain of the logic cube, not of the character, of the logic cube, okay? And now here, we're going to create our boom camera. And for those of you that watched the side-scroller tutorial, some of this may seem um, familiar. Hopefully it does, okay? We're going to set a distance of 15. So we're going to, again, you can play with this value, move it back, move it, move it, uh, depends on how close or how far you want the camera to be. Next up, we're going to set the pitch. And the pitch of the camera, we're going to set this to be 90. Okay? So by setting it to 90, this is what gives us our top down view. We're going to be looking straight down onto the player, okay? Uh, if you remember on our side scroller, our pitch was zero. Oh, don't know if you heard that little ambulance drove by, so hopefully that uh, doesn't bother you guys. All right, so we got a pitch of 90, and now we're gonna set our yaw. And our, our yaw is also actually gonna be 90. And by setting the yaw to 90, uh, what this does is this positions the camera directly behind our main character. If we leave the yaw at zero, it, we're going to be looking at it from the side. And we want our camera to be uh, behind the main character in this case. So we're going to load this up and see what we have. All right. So here we got our main cam camera. Oh, geez. Lots of ambulances going by. Hopefully everything's OK. All right. So you can see this is our, our top-down camera, and everything looks great, OK? Problem is, of course, we can, we can wander off the screen like this, all right? Which is not what we want, all right? The idea is we want to limit our main character's movement so he can't move off the screen. Now, how do we do this, right? Therein lies the question. So this is where things get a little bit fun. What we're going to do is we're going to grab another logic cube, and I'm going to snap it down. We're going to snap to the grid again. And I'm going to move this logic cube ah, over here, right? And now on this logic cube, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into its brain. And just for 
explanation purposes here so you guys can can see and so I can see and remember as well I'm gonna display its position and this I'm gonna say screen uh, top left okay and now in addition to that I'm gonna holding the left bumper go into edit go into properties appearance and we're gonna set visible to on okay so we can actually see this cube now we're gonna take this cube and we're gonna copy it and we're gonna move it down here to the bottom right all right and I say bottom right because the idea is we're gonna be looking down at them like this okay and we're gonna go into the brain and instead of top left I'm gonna say bottom right just so that we're hundred percent clear on which is which and now we can load our game this will all make sense in a moment I promise you some of you are going like what what's he doing this is crazy talk well no I assure you I assure you this has a point so what we want here is we can see where our logic cubes are we want the the cube in the bottom right we want that to be positioned in the exact bottom right corner when we're looking down on the camera like this and then the top left one we want it to be exactly in the top left hand corner of the screen okay and we're going to be using these logic cubes as restrictors to limit the movement of the player and you'll see how we do this in just a moment okay so basically right now we need to kind of play with them until we get them into the corners so let's start with the one on the top left we'll grab this oops snap it down move it a little bit up like that and see if that's see how that's looking all right we need to move it a little bit more to the left and a little bit further up so let's do that now grab it a little bit further nor up and to the left see how that looks all right it's pretty close all right uh, we can make little minor adjustments later and now for the one on the bottom right all right we're gonna also move this again kind of down and there's a fair bit over to the right we need to move it all right so just a touch more to the right and maybe a little bit up actually so a little bit up and a touch more to the right Okay, that should be good enough for these purposes. We can modify those later, which is the great part about this setup, okay? So, now, as you can see, we're also displaying the position of each of those cubes. The first one in the top left, we've got 2.5, 10, and negative 3.5. And the bottom right, we've got negative 15, 10, and 6. And realize when you're displaying positions, it's always listing them X, Y, and then Z. So the X position of the top left is 2.5. The Y is the same. Remember, Y is the height, okay, like vertically. So when I, you know, jump, I'm modifying my Y position, okay? Um, and then the last one is Z. So uh, the bottom line is we're looking for which one's greater. So 2.5 is greater than negative 15. So the top left one has got the max X value because it's the X is higher than the one on the bottom. So that's x max and the one on the bottom right is x min because it's negative 15 it's lower than the one up top now the, the z value at the top is negative 3.5 and the z value at the bottom is positive 6 so the bottom one is going to be z max and the top left is going to be z min so the top left is x max z min and the bottom right is x min z max so let's just do this so we hit the bottom right, all right? We're going to edit this and we're gonna rename it just so we're gonna call this X min Z max, right? And this one here, we're going to call X max Z min, okay? And this is gonna keep our sanity, if you will, okay? So now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our character's brain here, okay? And we're going to insert a couple lines. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, I'll insert one for now. I'm going to say when position X. Uh, I didn't like that. Oh, oops. Oh, here we are. That's Y. That would be Y. When position X is greater than. Ooh, 20 downloads. Yay. All right. Um, in world picker, we're going to select our logic cube here. And we're going to go that logic of the X max Z min, right? So when our position, the position of the character is greater than. Or sorry, position of the character on the x-axis is greater than our logic cube's position on the x-axis, right? Then our position in the x-axis is going to be equal to this guy. And the idea is that you can never pass this, this cube. All right, okay, so, because this is the max, right? On the x-axis, so, what happens is when we move our character, all right? And oh, look at that, I cannot move any further in this direction because it keeps getting, re or my position keeps getting reset. Whenever my position is actually greater than that, no, it, it gets reset back to the other one. So I can't, it's like an invisible wall, all right? I can still move up this way, and I can still move the other way. So that's what we're going to be changing now, okay? We'll do the other three. Again, back in our character's brain. Let's just copy-paste, all right? And now we're going to say when position X is less than, right? And instead of X max Z min, we're going to use our in-world picker and select the other logic cube, our Z X min Z max. Right? When it's less than that, then I'm just going to copy this, paste, and delete that. So we were, we're referring to the same object, right? Our X min Z max. Okay? And now by doing this, this should restrict us on the right side. Okay? So now again, I'm going to copy paste. All right? Now I've got to be a little bit more careful here because now we're dealing with the Z axis. All right? So first of all, I've got to change all these to Z. We're no longer dealing with X. All right? And this one is, this is X min Z max, so I need to change this to greater than. Okay? So, when my position Z is greater than X min Z max, because position Z, all right? So it's great, remember, this is the maximum one. Okay? So, when that happens, we're going to reset our Z value to be equal to our position Z. The position Z of the, the Z max one. All right? And our final line of code here, we're going to say... When Z, I'll, I'll select this so you guys get a better feel. We're going to say less than. When our position Z is less than this guy, uh, right? Z, our X max Z min, right? Because he's Z min. So it's got to be less than this. We're going to copy this, paste this over here, delete that, right? So we're dealing with uh, our position Z gets reset to X max Z min. So here, you guys want to take a screenshot or something, you want to look at the code, there it is. This code is what restricts our movement for the player. So now we're going to run this. And look at that. We can't move that way. We are stuck on screen. Okay? We cannot move off the screen because we're restricted by these logic cubes, okay? So, now here comes the trick, right? We're going to use our attach function here, okay? And we're going to grab this logic cube and we're going to attach it to this logic cube, the one in the middle. I'm going to grab this logic cube and we're going to attach it again to the logic cube in the middle, okay? And by doing this, these two logic cubes, the X min Z max and Z, uh, X max Z min, they're attached to this cube. So they're going to move along with it. And that's the secret. We're going to be moving this main cube here. And we're going to rename this as well. So it's no longer logic cube. This is going to be main camera. Okay? 
So again, some of you may notice I've actually got the, uh, when you rename an object, the title of the object appears above it, and that's really, really helpful. If you don't know how to, s it's actually an option you have to enable though. So click start. If you haven't, don't have that option, you can go into options and then controls. Weird that it's under controls, I know. Okay. But show object names. Always turn that on. You always want this on. Trying to deal with it and look at logic cubes and you and they've got no names and they're all over the place. It's chaos, okay? Trust me, you want to name your objects and you want to have that show object names on. Okay? So now that this is now that these are attached, we can do some fun stuff. Again in our main camera brain, let's just say move. in direction and we're gonna say south because we know again when you ever you spawn it it's gonna be we're, we're all facing south here so it all works okay and I'm gonna say at speed ah, 0 0.2 okay so now our main camera is going to be constantly moving forward at speed 0 0.2 and it's going to be dragging our restrictors along with it. So what happens when we do that? Well, hey, here we go, right? Look at this. It's dragging them along with it and I can't move off the screen at any given time. We are now slowly moving forward and I can't move off the screen. Isn't that cool? All right, so now we're going to put a few final touches on this, okay? First of all, the movement of the player. Go back into our brain here, and then all you're going to do is just say left stick move, but we're going to make a minor modification to this, and we're going to say with strafing, because, you know, come on, this is a, this is a shooter. We want it to be with strafing. It's got to look cool, right? Um, and then finally, we're going to go back into these guys' brains, right? And we're going to delete this line of code here saying display the position because we no longer need it, right? We're also going to edit this and set our appearance visible off, right? So now we can no longer see those cubes, all right? And we're going to do the same thing for the one on the bottom right. And now when we start it up, We have a s folks. This is a vertical shooter. All right, can't move off the screen. We're scrolling. We can still dodge. We can actually still jump. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys can figure out how to, you know, just delete the jump code, right? And that is how you create a vertical scrolling shooter. Now we also have another option. Um, if we want, we can do uh, kind of a third option, I guess, for how to move this. And I'm going to um, create this just so that uh, you guys can also see that there's another way we can do that. We can, we can move the camera. The camera doesn't always have to be scrolling like that, okay? We can create another logic cube here, and we can call this one, I don't know, um, um, movement. Uh, or just a moving forward cube or something, okay? There we go, okay, so this is now moving forward cube. We're also going to attach this guy. Let me take off uh, gridlock there, over here. And I'm, I'm positioning this uh, just a little bit forward, I guess. It's kinda, kinda nice, okay? And again, now here in the brain of, well, first of all, in the brain of my player, I need to add one line of code here. Uh, and this is the line of code I always add to all the players, okay? Is I'm just gonna say once, okay? And I always create a global variable, all right? And it's gonna be called, ob a global object variable, I should say, okay? So we're gonna create, oops, new object variable, okay? And we're gonna call this one player. And we're going to say equals me, <laughs> okay? And what this does is this, this creates an object variable, well, called player, and it's going to be equal to me. Now, technically speaking, you could use the player tile 
all right a lot of the times you will see this throughout a lot of the default code this player tile in fact i'm pretty sure it's still in our brain because we're using more or less the uh, uh default brain um so um sorry just showing somebody was asking me what i was using for typing it's actually my i've got a wireless keyboard here hooked up to the xbox all right. Highly recommend you use a, a USB or wireless keyboard while doing this. It just makes everything so much faster. Okay. Um, it's not necessary, of course, but it's just faster. <laughs> um, so you could use the player tile. All right. Uh, it's in here, but the problem is the player tile acts very strange sometimes. So um, I don't recommend using it. In fact, I would actually recommend removing the player tile from all of your code uh, in order to make things uh, you just have more control over it okay so I've got this global player object value all right and now inside my main camera what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna ignore this line here because we're no longer gonna be moving forward at speed 0 0.2 all the time what we're gonna do is we're gonna say when uh, and I believe this is yeah, this is the Z value, okay. And this is the Z, oops, what's going on here? All right, um, that's my Z min, okay, all right, so. When global player position Z. Basically, his Z, the Z coordinate of the player. But I have to you reference this using this global player value because we're in the brain of the logic cube and not in the brain of the player. Okay. So by doing this, Project Spark knows that I'm talking about the player here. Okay. So when this value is less than. Okay. And now I'm going to use my in-world picker, and I'm going to select this moving forward cube. Okay. And I'm going to say position Z. All right. So basically, when I'm when the, the player is actually ahead of that cube, then we are going to move in direction south. Okay. But when I'm not ahead of that, we're not going to move in that position. So now by doing this, what does what does this create? Okay. Well, everything looks the same, right? I'm strafing, I'm doing this. But now if I move ahead of that... Ooh, look at this. The camera will now only advance when I reach that part of the screen. Okay? And if I want that part of the screen... Oh, jeez, I got sirens going off here. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. Apologize, all right? If I want this to be further down, I can just grab this cube and I can move it. You know, I can move it back here if I want, right? So now it automatically, you saw it move up right away. Now as I walk forward, you can see the camera moves with me. So depending on the type of you know, t vertical shooter you're looking for, the type that you want to create, um, this is a great method, okay? Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, again, if you enjoyed it, then please subscribe to the, the channel, Project Spark Community, or you can follow me on Twitch. I'm uh, Abra, A-A-B-R-A, or my gamer tag is ST space Abra, A-A-B-R-A. Wow, lots of sirens going on. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you again soon. Take care, guys.